Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Sam Gabriel here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 7 of What If Deku Wasn't Quirkless. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying sit back and relax, you're in for a treat, so we begin. After receiving the announcement from his homeroom teacher about the upcoming sports festival, our green-haired hero prepared himself for the upcoming challenges the festival had to offer. It was his only chance of proving that he could be a great hero who could overcome any challenge. During his two weeks of training, the Green Hat had come up with new fighting styles and techniques involving his quirk under the supervision of All Might. Well done, my boy. You've been making progress with your newfound quirk, the number one hero said with pride. The compliment made the freckled boy blush in embarrassment, for he was not used to so much praise. He then stared down at his right hand with determination. I can do this. I can become the next symbol of peace, he thought to himself. After weeks of training, the day of the UA Sports Festival finally arrived. As he got ready to leave, Inko let her son know that she would be cheering him on, and that she would record everything. This made the green-haired boy smile. He gave his mother a kiss and waved goodbye. When he stepped out the door, he looked up at the sky. In the distance, he saw a crow flying nearby, which he found odd. He shrugged it off and continued on his way to the school. In the waiting room, all of Class 1A had become both nervous and excited for the event. Although a certain bi-colored teen made a face that made it seem like he was empty inside, he glared at the green-haired boy. There was a deep resentment that he harbored towards the number two hero. When he looked at Izuku, he only saw a culmination of his father. He changed his expression and was prepared to talk to Midoriya, but someone else already beat him to it. Hey, Deku, I just want you to know that I'll win this festival. Don't you dare hold back on me. Same goes for you, Icy Hot, the atomic blonde said in his usual angry tone. The freckled boy gave a smug grin and retorted, Okay, but if I win, you have to call me by my name. Instead of getting irritated, the atomic blonde scoffed and responded, And if I win, you'll have to be my training dummy. Deku agreed to the atomic blonde's wager, and they both shook hands. As Todoroki saw the exchange between the rivals, he decided to put a pin on talking to Deku. A couple of minutes later, they all entered the arena. Most were surprised by how many people had attended the event, while others were not. The opening speech went the same as in canon. Katsuki had made Class 1A a target yet again, but Izuku at this point wasn't surprised by his childhood friend slash bully's little declaration. The first event was an obstacle course. Midnight explained the rules. Everyone was allowed to use their quirks as long as they stayed within the course. As everyone got into their position for the race to start, the green-haired boy remembered what All Might told him before his two weeks of training. While a certain atomic blonde grit his teeth and prepared to beat everyone in the race... A certain scarred teen glared at a certain hero standing with his arms crossed in the stands. The race started, and everyone immediately ran into a corridor. Little by little, it got cramped by all the students. Everyone pushed and shoved each other while others used their quirks to go over them. The green-haired boy thought about using his quirk to leave the corridor, but decided not to. When he was about to get near the exit, the floor became encased in ice, which caused the other students near the exit to slip and fall. Present Mike commented, Wow, that Todoroki kid sure is cold! Aizawa sighed at the terrible pun his childhood friend made. He then responded in a monotone voice, This is a competition. He's doing what he can to win. Let's hope it doesn't become his downfall. As the bicolored teen slid ahead, he stopped when he saw a giant robot stand in front of him. One of the other students pointed out that those were the same robots used at the entrance exam. The robot attempted to crush the students with its metal hand, all the other students had to duck and cover themselves as they prepared for the impact, but an impact never came. As they all looked up, they saw that the robot had been frozen over by the son of Endeavor. After he had frozen the robot, Shoto continued forward with the race. He had no time to stand around and waste time. Deku arrived on the scene and saw the robots. He was surprised at how fast Todoroki took it down with his quirk. It was moments like these that made the freckled boy want to write down some notes, but that had to be done much later. He saw a piece of the robot on the ground and decided to use it to his advantage. Move out of the way, extras! The talking dynamite shouted as he flew by everyone in the race. The students eventually reached the next obstacle, the fall. Competitors traversed large stone pillars connected by tightropes without falling into the pit below in order to move on to the next obstacle. Tsuyuasui, Tenya Ida, Shoto, and other students used their quirks while balancing themselves to get across. Katsuki flew across using his explosions, while Mei Hatsume used her gadgets to do the same. Shoto was the first to get across the fissure, with Katsuki in hot pursuit. Mezo Shoji and Yuga also flew over the obstacle, 
while Izuku traversed the tight ropes upside down. As soon as the bicolored teen entered the final obstacle, he saw a sign that warned him of mines. He carefully walked onto the minefield without trying to cause an explosion. However, some of the other competitors made it to the minefield and some stepped on a few. Out of the way, half-breed! This is my win! shouted Bakugo as he tried to blow up the scarred teen. The scarred teen dodged the blonde's attack and froze the blonde boy's right arm when he grabbed it. The little squabble stopped as soon as they saw a giant explosion in the distance. Out of the explosion came Midoriya. Whoa! What a twist! Midoriya from Class 1A gathered up some mines in order to make a big explosion to get in the lead. Eraserhead, what do you have to say about this? Present Mike asked. The bandaged-up teacher didn't respond immediately, but he was impressed by how much Midoriya managed to get done without the use of his quirk. He then responded with, Not bad, for an amateur. Present Mike felt a cold breeze pass him after Aizawa made that comment. Meanwhile, back at the race, the Greenette was getting close to landing on the ground. He needed some momentum to continue forward. He then got an idea. Izuku stood on both their shoulders and slammed his shield into the ground, creating yet another explosion that propelled him forward. He then ran as fast as he could to the finish line. Everyone in the audience was at the edge of their seats as they waited to see who would come out first. The winner stepped out of the corridor, and it was Izuku Midoriya. Everyone in the crowd was cheering, while in the distance, Enko cried her eyes out as she saw her son win the race on live TV. In second place came Katsuki Bakugo, and in third, Shoto Todoroki. The former was not happy that he came in second place, while the latter just looked away in disappointment. After everyone else had arrived at the arena, a certain brunette walked up to Deku and simply commented about how challenging the race was and that it was fun. The green-haired boy's face was completely red at how close the girl was talking to him. A couple minutes later, Midnight explained that students must form teams of a maximum of four people, one rider and at least one horse. She then explained the cavalry battle's point system. Each student was given a point value, and a team's value depended on where their members finished in preliminaries. A 40-second place finish is worth five points, with five points added to the point value with each cascading place. The first place finisher, however, is worth 10 million points. Individual point values are added together to reach each team's total. These point values are displayed via headbands. The goal of the game is to steal headbands in order to raise the team's score. Contestants are not allowed to make each other fall on purpose. Even if a team loses their headband or falls down, they can compete until the 30-minute time limit is up. After hearing that the first place winner was worth 10 million points, everyone looked at Izuku like a pair of lions waiting patiently to pounce on their prey in order to feed. This made the green-haired boy feel extremely overwhelmed. He started to get a bit anxious of what was going to happen to him. Midnight gave the students 15 minutes to form their teams. Many students in Class A had tried to join up with Katsuki because he came in third in the first event and had 200 points. Katsuki ended up teaming up with Eijiro, Hanta, and Mina. Minoru convinced Mezo and Tsuyu to join his team. All the while, everyone avoided Izuku because his point value was too high. I guess no one wants to join a guy who has too many points, Izuku thought. He was about ready to give up hope until he felt a hand on his shoulder. He looked at who it was, and it turned out to be Onchako. When it team up? I think it's better to team up with people you know, right? She said in a light-hearted, awkward tone. This moment caused the green-haired boy to create a waterfall of tears from his eyes. They then go to ask their friend Tenya Ida if he'd join their team, but the class rep refused their offer. He instead joined Shoto's team in order to beat Deku. Out of nowhere, a girl with pink braids and support gear introduced herself as Mei Hatsume, and she offered to join his team in order to promote her babies. Without hesitation, Izuku accepted Mei on the team. With the team nearly being completed, Deku noticed that almost everyone had joined a team. This made the freckled boy worry that he might not complete his team on time, but he got an idea on who should be his last team member. He recruited his classmate Tokoyami. With the team completed and with minutes to spare, Izuku went over the strategy with his teammates, to which they all nodded in agreement. They all got into their respective positions and waited for the second event to begin. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that We the Celestials has many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you'll need is right below here in the description, so feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.